What's up people, this is Sora with a new episode of Absolute Beginner Tutorials for Unreal Engine 4. As I said in the previous episode, in the coming couple of episodes, I'll teach you about creating NPC behavior for AI in Unreal Engine 4. We'll do this by creating an NPC in the engine which behaves like this. When you go close to it, it will see you and it will follow you around. And when you get far enough, it will stop following you, waits for two seconds, and goes back to its original position. In the previous episode, we talked about finite state machines, and we created a finite state machine for this character. In this episode, we'll script the character's behavior and also talk about AI perception and how it is used. So, our goal is to create a character that follows the player when it sees the player, and when it loses sight, it goes back to its position. My solution for achieving this goal is this. When the player enters the NPC's field of view, an event is triggered, and when this event is triggered, we'll check the NPC's state. If it's in a watch state, we'll we'll go to the follow state and go to the player. If it's in the follow state, we'll go to watch state and go back home. So to start, go and open up your NPC character, which we created in the previous episode. If you have not followed the previous episode, this is basically a copy of the player character. Uh, but I've taken away the scripts and the camera. Now, before we get into this, I want to point out something, and um, the point, my point is that there are different ways of implementing this solution. For example, you can use AI behavior trees. However, since my goal is to teach you the basics, I will use the blue character blueprint instead. So, we will start with the first part, which is getting an event which is triggered when the player enters the NPC's field of view. To do this, we will need a component called AI Perception. And this is basically a component that helps you detect objects in the world. Before I forget, we need to do one thing before adding the component. Select your NPC character and under details panel look at pawn there you have something called AI controller class make sure AI controller is selected there so click on add component write AI and select AI perception the next step is to set this up select it and under details panel you see AI perception click plus in front of census come uh, config and there is a drop down menu. Uh, in this menu, select site, which is the sense we need. Click on a small arrow close to site, and then there is another arrow, arrow close to sense, and you'll get a bunch of options. First, click on detection by affiliation and tick everything here, which enables this to work, otherwise, it won't work. Then we have three variables we'll be working with, site radius, loose site radius, and vision angle. So in order to demonstrate these for you, first drag out your character in the viewport in a suitable place, and then click on simulate. And when you do this, you will see something like this. So the green circle is our site radius. And when the object we are looking for enters it, the, an event is triggered. The pink circle is loose site radius. And when, we, when the object exits this, the event is triggered again. And these lines represent the view angle. Basically, outside them, there is no detection. 
So, stop the simulation. Now we need to do one more thing, and that is adding a stimuli source to our player. So open the player character, click on add component, and write AI, and you'll see AI perception stimuli source. Click on that, select it, and under details panel, and under AI perception, tick auto register, and then there is a plus sign here. Click on that and choose site from the, the drop down menu, which means that this object, which is our player, will be registered when interacting with our NPC. So if we go back to our NPC blueprint, you will, if you select the AI perception, under events, you will see two events. On perception updated and on target perception updated. Click on on target perception updated. And this is basically the event that we need to implement our first solution. It is triggered when we enter the green circle and also triggered when we exit the pink circle. So basically, the first part is done. Now, on to the second part, which is when this event is triggered want to change the state to watch and we want we want the we want to check the state first if it's watch we want to change it to follow and we want to go to the player so before doing that we need to set up some stuff in we, be, we begin with the begin event so get a event begin play and get a reference to our player character, which is the third person character. Save this in a variable so we can use it later. We also need our NPC's initial location and rotation. So get a get actor location and get actor rotation no no and save or promote both of them to variables I call them initial rotation and initial location now just connect the wires and this part is done. Next, we need to create a variable which holds the character's current state. So click on create variable, call it state, and change its type to the enum that we created in the previous episode which basically holds two states, follow and watch. So we need to, when the event is triggered, we need to check uh, if it's watch and change it to follow. We could use a branch, but node, but I will use something else, which is called the switch node. Uh, just write switch and click on switch on state NPC. This is basically the same function but when you have enums it's easier to work with switch if state is watch the first pin is executed if it's follow the second one now if it's watch we'll switch to follow and we want to go to the player and we'll use a node called ai move to to do that draw out a wire from on and write self and the actor it will be the player which we set set in the begin event so if we leave it like this the enemy or the NPC will move to the player and when it reaches the player it will just stop to make it continuously follow the prep player drag out a wire from the event that we set up and break it 
and here you will have something successfully sent. So sense. So create a branch node and connect it to this. This is basically true when we are the player is detected and false when it's not. So when we get to the player, check this. If it's true, we want to move the, to, to the player again. So we'll create a loop here, basically. There are different solutions to do this. You could, for example, use tick. But I use this method because tick basically executes every um, tick. And it's, it requires more uh, calculations. It uses more CPU power. But this runs just when it's necessary. As I said before a couple of times, there are different solutions to problems. There's not just one solution. Uh, and all of none of them is right or wrong. But some solutions are more efficient. And I feel like this is the more efficient solution here. So the second part is done. However, if we use this now, it will not work. That is why we are, that is the reason why is that we are missing something called the nav mesh. So go to your viewport and write under modes, write nav mesh, you'll get something called nav mesh bounds volume and add that to your level. So when you add that to the level, you'll get um, a couple of settings here. Brush settings used to scale it scale the volume so you can scale it to as big as you want. You basically want to cover the area that the NPC is going to move around in. And if you press P, you'll see the area that is covered. So I have already created one, which is this box that you see here. So I'll delete this nav mesh. And what nav mesh does basically it enables the pawn to pathfind their way through obstacles and jump off ledges and things like that. Now the last part of the solution is when the event is triggered and we are in the follow state, we change to watch state, we stop moving, we wait for two seconds, we check again if we are in watch state, if so, we go back home. So go to your NPC character again and here from follow state we go to watch state, we stop all movement immediately which does um, what it says it's going to do, basically stopping all the movement, let me just rearrange this, these notes in a good way um, so it looks nicer. Then we will delay or we'll wait for two seconds just in case if the player decides to come back. Then we will check our state again. If you're still in the watch state, we will move to our home location. Here you could use the same successfully send variable also. And here you will, will make use of the initial location that we set up in the event begin. And then just to make sure that it the NPC is facing the chest again. We'll use set actor rotation and the initial rotation. That's it. All is set and this should work. So you can go ahead and test it out and see how it works out. You can also put comments around all these nodes the nodes which I will not do right now. So we did it guys and girls. Thanks for watching.
please like the video and subscribe for more videos. Also leave comments if you have any suggestions regarding these videos if you want me to cover some specific subject or if you, if you have questions for me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.